Hey everyone, welcome to Liftoff, the channel where we provide SpaceX news and updates and also update you on important developments in the space race. In this episode, we have updates about a SpaceX's newest drone. Please subscribe to our channel. If you enjoy your time with us, please like us and share. A new drone joins the fleet. The drone fleet used by SpaceX to catch falling rockets now has a third autonomous ship, whimsically called a shortfall of gravitas. Founder Elon Musk unveiled the newest floating rocket landing pad on Twitter Friday, along with a dramatic video from flying drone circling the ship. Autonomous SpaceX drone ship, a shortfall of gravitas. Musk wrote succinctly in the post, The drone ship is fully automated with no tugboat required to take it out into the Atlantic Ocean, nearby SpaceX's typical launch site, at a Kennedy Space Center in Florida, he added in another tweet. The new ship will be put into place in Florida to support Atlantic launches of Falcon Heavy and flagship rocket of space, the Falcon 9, that regularly sends Starlink broadband satellites to orbit, and NASA's astronauts and cargo to the International Space Station among other customer requests. SpaceX's next expected launches are a stalling set sometime in July from the Vandenberg Space Force Station in California at a CRS-26 ISS cargo mission from the Kennedy Space Center in Florida on August 18th. A shortfall of Gravitas will replace the role of the long-running Of Course I Still Love You drone ship, which has supported Atlantic launches since 2015. This month, it was switched to the Pacific Coast in a month-long journey beginning June 10th. SpaceX is ramping up launches of its Starlink satellites in California, requiring more drone ships supporting to catch reusable stages of its rockets. Meanwhile, ASOG will work in the Atlantic alongside SpaceX other drone ship. Just read the instructions, which moved to the Port Canaveral from the Port of Los Angeles in 2019. It appears drone ship may work together to catch reusable side boosters from forthcoming launches if a Twitter conversation in 2018 still holds water, so to speak. Back then, Musk said a third drone ship was under construction. Like the other two drone ships, ASOG is named in honor of work from the late science fiction author Ian M. Banks. The newest ship namesake is the fictional spaceship, experiencing a significant gravitas shortfall, while the other two ships are also named for vessels mentioned in Banks' cultured novels. ESOG's arrival also comes as SpaceX is ramping up on its Starship prototype series that is meant to test out spaceship that could one day be used as backbone of Mars settlement scheme by the California company. SpaceX hopes to do an orbital test of Starship soon and was targeting July, but it is waiting on certification from the Federal Aviation Administration in a process that typically takes months at least. Starship launches from nearby the villages of Boca Chica, Texas. Chill Pepper in Space A batch of chill pepper seeds has been planted on the International Space Station as a part of new experiment that aims to expand the range of space-growing foods ahead of the possible future missions to Mars. The 48 hatch chill pepper seeds arrived at the orbital outpost June 5th with a SpaceX Dragon CRS-22 commercial resupply mission. Now, the red and green chill peppers are starting to grow as part of the NASA's planned Habitat 04 experiment, the agency said in a Tuesday statement. Astronauts get most of their fresh food supplies from cargo ships, but earlier versions of the Habitat experiments already produced some tasty treats. During the previous tree harvests, crew have enjoyed space grow red lettuce, Mizuna mustard and two other lettuce types and radishes. Astronauts have also grown flowering plants, such as zinnas, to spurs up their living quarters. Current Expedition 65 astronauts Shane Kimbroke, who got a sample space grown, initiated this version of the Habitat experiment. Unfortunately, 
Kim Brook will likely be back on Earth by the time the chilled peppers are ready in four months, as he and other SpaceX Crew 2 astronauts are expected to splash down in October. Nevertheless, the experiment team with NASA Kennedy Space Center's Exploration Research and Technology Program paid tribute to the crew's efforts to continue developing space food as a part of the large research effort to feed astronauts on deep space missions. Once on the Moon or Mars, astronauts will not be able to rely on supplies from Earth and will have to grow more food logically. It is one of the most complex plant experiments on the station to date because of the long germination and growing times. Matt Romain, principal investigator for Plant Habitat 04, said in the NASA statement, We have previously tested flowering to increase the chances for a successful harvest because astronauts will have to pollinate the peppers to grow fruit. The experiment is hosted in advanced plant habitat, one of the three plant chambers in which astronauts can grow and harvest food, flowers and other crops. Much of the maintained work can be performed remotely by teams on the ground at a Kennedy, reducing the hands-on time by busy astronauts in orbit. Astronauts are known to get stuffy heads in microgravity, so spicy food are often on the menu, anyway to help encourage them to eat. This pepper variety, called the New Max Española Improved Pepper, naturally grows in zones such as New Mexico, NASA said. Researchers spent two years designing among two dozen varieties before picking this one for a space ride due to its potential for feeding astronauts on missions further away from Earth. We are limited to crops that don't need storage or extensive processing, Romain said. All peppers also have the advantage of being dense in vitamin C and other nutritions, providing good nutrition along with taste. Additionally, the colorful red, which will pop up late in the growing cycle, may benefit the astronauts' mental health based on the past studies suggesting bright vegetables are a boon, Romain added. The crew will sample some of the 48 peppers and send the rest back to Earth for future analysis. The science team will evaluate the flavor and the texture of the peppers from crew feedback, along with the Scoville measurements, which evaluates the plant's heat or spiciness. That, the researchers said, can depend in a part of the environment in which it was grown. So changing how much water, light and heat the plant gets might actually affect how hot they will be. That's it for today's episode. Thank you for joining us. Please like us and hit the subscribe button so we can notify you when the next episode is available. Until next time, it's bye for now from all of us at Liftoff.